welcome or welcome back to Sisters and Channel. You're all staying safe and well. And we've got a new feature because it's new because I've split it now. The match report, I've split into a match report and a player ratings. It's getting a bit unwieldy at 22 minutes, I think, for the full match report. So I've took the player ratings out and this is the player ratings for Manchester City 5, Newcastle United nil. We'll take that, won't we? 8th of May 2022, 4.30pm. Yeah, so the player ratings will be, obviously, we're looking at the Manchester Evening News ratings uh, this week. It's uh, this game, it's Stuart Brennan, which has been for most of the season. And my ratings as well. So I'll be doing Stuart scores and then I'll be doing my little uh, comments and scores as well. So uh, hope you enjoy it. It'd be uh, great if you can send us in your little player ratings or, you know, or agree or disagree or say that's fine, Bernard, but I think such and such deserves such and such a thing. So it'd be great to hear from you guys. Anyway, I hope you like, I hope you don't mind this. Let me know anyway with feedback if you think it's a good idea. As I say, I'd, I'd, I like to keep. The vlogs to between 10 and 12, 15 minutes maximum. So it's getting a bit too much with the match report. So please check that out as well if you want the match report for all the information and stats, etc. on the match as well. And my view on what's going to happen going forward on for Newcastle and us, of course. Anyway, let's get on with this player ratings. My starting score for this game, I thought the team played excellent as a team. I thought we were uh, one of our best displays uh, by all 11. Uh, a couple perhaps not quite up to it, but... A great team display for me. So my starting score is going to be a seven. I have no idea what Stuart Brennan uses his uh, starting score, but uh, let's go from there. And please, as I said, let me know what you think. So here we go. Right, Edison. Stuart said, produced a pass to the match to Foden. He did. And then a fine save from Wilson. It was absolutely hell. He's been getting a lot of stick, hasn't he, Edison, recently? Uh, very unfairly, in my opinion. And, you know, I know, after that Real Madrid game, we have to sort of pick on someone, don't we? And obviously, well pick on a few people, you know what City fans are like. I don't think it's the fan base, it's just an odd few people here and there. But uh, yeah, Stuart's given him a seven. I'm going to give him an eight. I thought that was a great save to keep his clean sheet. All right, probably Newcastle probably wouldn't have got back into it. But uh, it was a great save and his distribution was on point as well yesterday, which hasn't been great recently. So I was uh, pretty happy with that. So I'll give him an eight, Stuart, give him a seven. Jao Cancelo, ghostly presence, says Stuart at the far post whenever City attacked. Might have had three, but was content with an assist for Sterling. He has to improve his finishing, doesn't he? Stuart's given him a seven. I'll give him an eight. Yeah, much better game from Cancelo. But yeah, uh, just, just finish that. Just get that, you know, it's the nearly man in syndrome again, isn't it? Just improve that finishing, it make a hell of a difference. But it was very lively both up and down the pitch. And we will, obviously, in our last three games, we will need all the guys, including Cancelo, to do to work even harder, perhaps. Ruben Diaz, well, this is the, this is the sting in the tail, wasn't it, for a great victory. We've lost him for the rest of the season, apparently. Uh, looked wide open in the early stages, says Stuart, but tightened it up at a cost as he was forced off at half-time. Yeah, I hadn't seen what happened, but once I saw Fernandino warming up at half-time, I knew there was obviously some sort of problem. Should just give him a six. I've got to give him a seven. Uh, injured. I don't, I'm not sure when he got injured, uh, but obviously more for me. Uh, it was okay-ish, but obviously it's more of, more of a problem going forward, isn't it? I don't think we need to say too much on that. We'll see what happens over the next three games. I am Eric Laporte. Uh, Stuart said a couple of early lapses, but he made up for that with the vital second goal. He did. He could have scored as well early on, couldn't he? Uh, yeah, fantastic. Uh, he sort of met it perfectly and blasted it over the bar. Si footed it over the bar. Stuart's given him a seven. I, I'd give him an eight. As I say, he did score, but he should have had a couple, but he was alert and quick enough to get that goal that he get. So, yeah, he's now our most experienced centre-back, isn't he, <laughs> for the rest of the season. So, uh, yeah, I thought he had a good game. Let's hope we see more of it. Uh, Alex Zinchenko, some great work, says Stuart, on the overlap and the build-up has been excellent recently. Yeah, no, he didn't let us down, Zinchenko, yet again. Stuart's given him an eight. I'll have to give him an eight. He, he wants to try and fizz that ball in as well when he gets the opportunity, which is great. And he did try and zip these crosses in and fizz them in. And uh, he could have paid off more than uh, that assist for Foden, of course, which uh, you know was, was excellent in the second half. But I thought Zinchenko had a great game. So I give him eight, Stuart give him eight. Rodri, Stuart said a thumping near post header it was and imposed his physical presence on the game when it matters. Stuart's given a seven. See, it's been a bit mean, Stuart, I think, this week uh, with this game. Uh, I give him an eight. Uh, finally, I keep got banging on for a long time that Rodri's a big lad. He should make that 
take that and make that an advantage on, on set pieces and corners and stuff. And finally, finally, we're seeing that. I don't expect him to do rocket shots, but he's a big lad. He should be getting these headers in. There's also a rumour that he may step back into defence, obviously, with the problems we've got. But either way, he had a very good game. Seems to have found his mojo again. Uh, and as, uh, as DM, he was sound as well. No problems there with, with Newcastle. Uh, again, based on who we're playing, I suppose. Ilkay Gundo and Stewart said, showed his quality for the first two goals and was a perfect fold for De Bruyne. Yet again, another guy who, who seems to have livened up uh, recently, who's had a bit of a lull. Stewart's given him an 8. I give him an 8.5. I thought it was his best game for ages, uh, uh, Gundo. And, uh, Huss, it allowed KDB to sort of release KDB, if you like. I know they've been trying to release Pogba for years, haven't they? But it never worked, did it? But, uh, yeah, it did. I think it released. But in himself, he was doing some pretty good stuff in his own right as well and was cool and calm and collected. I mean, since since we found out he's had his bad back, I don't think he's played that, that badly, to be honest with you. So that just shows you, doesn't it? Uh, Kevin De Bruyne, well, Stuart says, absolutely incredible. I have to echo that. From minute one with a big hand in two goals and some stunning work. Stuart's given him a nine. I've got to have to give him a nine as well. I mean, it makes the lacklustre Madrid game and the fact we couldn't utilise him properly and had to bring him off uh, just weird. Uh, makes it more weird when you saw what sort of form he was in yesterday. Absolutely. I mean, he could have had another two or three assists if, if people had finished the, finished the job for him. Uh, I thought he was brilliant. I just, just say, we'll have to. Well, I can't forget about the Bernabeu. I can't forget about that. But we'll have to, won't we? But. Such a shame we didn't see that Kevin there. But as I said, if if tactically Real Madrid had sorted us out and got 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 the best of him, surely Pep could have sort of released him somehow. Brought you know done something different like Gundo and re, uh, sort of released him in this game. He, he could have surely done something. It was such a shame to bring him off. I, I had to think he was injured, but he wasn't. Uh, it's just a shame that obviously this form wasn't for the Madrid. Anyway, we move on, don't we? Great game yesterday. That's all we can say. Ryan Sterling Stewart said, nodded in the opening goal, excellent. Added the fifth and was a shimmying, hard running nightmare for the two defence. Well, well he's, a, he's, he's just an enigma, isn't he? Ryan Sterling. He's, for me, I wouldn't be that worried if he goes. But when he's playing like this, I thought he played very, very well yesterday. Stewart's given me an 8. I thought I'd give me an 8.5. I've not watched it back. Obviously, I'm based on what I saw while I was there. And I just thought it was excellent. And one of his. He had a little purple patch a few games ago where he played okay for a couple of games and then he went off again but yeah again like as I said I think I think the fact all the team played very well lifted him and gave him that freedom as well because other players were, were doing doing the business so it gave Sterling a bit more freedom so yeah no problem with Sterling yesterday if he carries on like that yeah I'm, I'm happy but if he won't sign a contract he can bog off uh, <laughs> Gabby Jesus uh, Stuart said did the toughest job up against two big centre-backs with his usual enthusiasm and zest yeah he's, he's my least impressive player for me Stuart's given him a 7 I've given him a 7 the basic uh, I thought it was quiet by his nuisance standards, but as Stuart said, there probably a tough job to play up against the big guys. I mean, one of them's about eight foot six, and he one of those two two centre backs. But yeah, um, others pick again similar similar to Raheem Sterling, but he, he improved because other players were improved around him. And Gabby Jesus was was fine, but obviously, as I say, other players were doing it as well, so it didn't matter so much. But he was no doubt being a nuisance as he always is without actually doing anything specific in front of goal. Probably why he was taken off. Uh, Jack Grealish, uh, Stewart said, valuable job out on the city left, continually drawing defenders and did superbly for the fourth goal. Uh, eight, yeah, I'd give him an eight as well. Uh, again, one of his better games. Uh, all right, thrived against a middling sort of Newcastle defence. Uh, but it was linking really well down that left-hand side. I think we saw this when he first started appearing for City. Uh, those link ups down that left hand side, and it worked with Zinchenko. And then obviously, when his busy mate came on, Foden, it worked with him as well. I thought it was an excellent game from Jack Grealish. So I say we both give him eight out of ten. I'm on to the substitutes. Yeah, Fernandinho, obviously, for Diaz at half time. A stunning centre back cameo, said Stuart from the Manchester Evening News. Eight out of ten. I have to give, I don't very rarely give defenders more than the standard, uh, sorry, substitutes more than the standard. 
uh, number, but he has to be an A. I thought he was excellent. I mean, even when he was in the uh, half time, guys, when he was having the kick in, he was sort of um, <laughs> heading the ball. You could tell he was obviously going in defence because he, he was literally having the guy up to him and he was heading, heading the ball back at power and stuff like that. And it was excellent. I thought it was excellent. All right, we need him for the next three games. Uh, Will he do it? Of course he can do it. Yeah, another 270 minutes. That's nothing, is he? Surely he can, obviously. I don't I don't really want to see Rodri there. I think I'd rather see Ferner back at centre-half if Aki isn't fit enough to play alongside Laporte, which is the big problem at the moment. Diaz and Stone's missing. But uh, brilliant. It was excellent. Eight out of eight. Eight out of ten for me, for Ferner. Uh, you know, it's such a, you know, games like that, you, you think, oh, why can't we have him just for another season to fill in like that? Brilliant. Uh, Phil Foden uh, for Jesus on 63 minutes. Stuart said, lively and put City 4-0 up. Yep, 7. He's given a 7. <laughs> he scores a goal. He gets a, a bang average score. But I suppose Stuart might be starting with 6 out of 7, might he? I give him an 8. Uh, a flying fold, and it's not what any team wants to see in the coming on for the last half hour of a game, and that's what you know, last third of a game, and that's what we got. Some great link up players, I said, certainly with Grealish, etc. Uh, yeah, very like you say, he got a bit of a rest. He didn't get a total rest that perhaps uh, uh, Pep was hoping for, but he got a bit of a rest. But uh, he was he was pretty impressive when he came on and did the job. And Mr Egan Riley, of course, for Laporte on 87 minutes. Stuart just simply said no time to mark. Well, I'm going to say he did one great thing at the back. I don't know who, which attacker it was, but he sort of won the ball and took control of the box. And rather than panicking and blasting forward, which isn't our, isn't the pet way, and it's certainly not been Egan Riley's way, although I must admit, seeing him before, I think he's a, he's a, a more standard right-back than we've, we've got out there. But yeah, he so calmly took it and found a, found a blue shirt with no panic. All right, he was only on for five or six minutes, but hey, I'll give him give him credit for that. And yeah, finally, before we finish this, my man of the match. I think most people's man of the match yesterday had to be KDB, didn't it? I think there's no doubt about that. I thought he was uh, head and shoulders above anyone. As I said, it's a shame it's just a few days too late, wasn't it, after the Real Madrid game? But uh, it was mine. So let me know, guys. Let me know what you think. Let me know your player ratings. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts on keeping this separate to the match report. And please check that out if you get a chance as well. So I've kept this about 12 minutes. So that's what we wanted to do. That's what I was aiming for. So thanks for watching anyway, guys. And uh, please leave us your comments. That'd be great to hear from you. Anyway, until we meet again, I'm going to ask one thing, don't I? Please stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.